And there are plenty of ways, plenty of ways that our minds fool us and trick us. One way that most of you are probably aware of is uh, pareidolia. It's a type of illusion or misperception involving a vague or obscure stimulus being perceived as something clear and distinct. Facial recognition is one of the most common forms of this. And there's also auditory and textual. So once again, we see this picture. And all of us, hopefully in this room, will say, wow, look at that. It looks like a face. And we'd move on. However, some other people may see this and say, yeah, it looks like a face. And, I, and here's what happened. There was this Native American tribe that was walking over here, and they got slaughtered. And then this is the, the, their spirits pushed out of the mountain and made this face as a sign of whatever, of, of their everlasting souls, spirits. So what we have is we have people taking these, these naturally occurring things that look like something else, attaching their narrative to it, and then coming up with an explanation. And we've seen this before, right? Pictures of Jesus and toast, the nun bun, I mean, you name it. This happens all the time. It's very clear. We, we're trained to see faces and see other images. Here's an, a great example, a really funny example of pareidolia, textual pareidolia. This came up on my Facebook feed about two months ago. One of my friends posted this video from a pastor, and the pastor in this video was in front of his congregation, and he said that he found the secret code in the Bible. <laughs> now, you got to listen. The first book of the Bible, Genesis, has names in the Bible. The first 10 names of the people listed in the Bible, if you take their names... You translate their names, and you put them all in order, and you add some uh, filler in words, right? <laughs> what you get is a prophecy about Jesus. So, for example, Adam equals man, Seth equals appointed, Enoch equals mortal, and here's the prophecy. Man has appointed mortal sorrow, but the blessed God shall come down teaching, and his death shall bring the despairing comfort. This is a part where you're supposed to go, ooh, because that's what his congregation did. So I explained to my friend on Facebook, I said, this is a perfect example of textual pareidolia. What you're basically doing is you're just picking names, and there's dozens of definitions that you could choose from. You could put them all together. You could add in filler words. You could make it say anything. It's like putting together a puzzle with all square pieces of the same color and the same size. Not hard, folks. And of course, I got what I expected. I was called a cynic. I was called a heathen and many other names that I don't want to go over. So I decided to prove it to her. So what I did is I went on my Facebook feed. I looked at the first six names of the people on my Facebook, and I took their names in order, mind you. I got their, the definitions for their names, and I added a couple filler words. And I came up with my own prophecy about Jesus, and here it goes. From a bee swarm, from the wood of the royal forest, will come a loving and beautiful man wearing a wreath of honor, they will call healer. Thank you, everybody. 